a 2012 okay. Raptor. Took it to the guy at H&M. Did a stage one on it. Hell I've never yeah. been to the dunes. That's oh, my see, next we step. We're gonna have to exploit all these vehicles. What's up guys, we're out here with our buddy Thomas. We're really stoked to be able to uh, come on over here and check some of these special projects that he has going on. So we have three vehicles that we're gonna feature that are Thomas's. I'm really pumped. These things are really badass. We got to hang out with Thomas at Hell Track. Thomas is here with us right now. Where'd you grow up, Thomas? El Cajon, Santee, Lakeside yep. area. Saw Ivan Stewart, he's on, lived on the other side of the hill. I'd go check out his stuff as like a little eight-year-old kid. I was always mesmerized by these trucks, you know, especially race trucks. You told um, me a story about looking in the bushes at Ivan Stewart's. Well, yeah, I, I, I have told the story. I even told it to Ivan Stewart once. I would ride my bicycle, I'm like eight years old, but I'd hide in the bushes across so he didn't see me, you know what yeah, I mean? But they were yeah. always working on stuff in their garage. Somebody would come out and I'd go scurrying away. But I love that stuff, so I wanted to see what they were doing, I wanted to understand what they were doing. When you told me that, that was inspiring to me because and that's every little kid. Like scurrying off in the bushes, that's normal. Like that's just being a little kid. <laughs> like you're just, you're into what you're seeing, you're like, oh shit, they're gonna go, see me. Go. Yeah. Yeah. It's genuine excitement. I think these trucks, make us all giddy like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. like when he was sending it at the end of the day, no one was there. You know what I mean? It was just him and the track, you yeah. know? And like me, as an enthusiast and a fan of this stuff, it was like, dude, I have my own show right now. This guy's freaking sending it yeah. off the step down. And as that kid feeling, I feel like we're all searching for that excitement, that old, that genuine feeling. Well, I've ridden that track on a dirt bike, which is not that big a deal, doesn't seem mm -hmm. like a big deal, but now the, the step up that Darren did, that's a big that's deal. That's a big deal. Yeah, especially the truck. <laughs> well, I was like, yeah. there's no way he's gonna pull that off. He did it. Yeah. I have a lot of respect. You know, what I really value with you so much is you are passionate about these things. Like, you know, on the highest level of just like, you care about these things and they're cool to you. And that's what's so special. He also has the Roadster Shop Colorado. We're gonna go into that, which that was before this one, right? You got this, which is what, a 12 or a 13 Raptor? This is a 2012 okay. Raptor. stock truck. I bought it from a guy named John Bowers. Yeah. And John took it to the guy at H&M, did a stage one on it, and then kept it like that for a while. And he decided he wanted to go racing. So he basically raced this truck in Best of the Desert for a couple of years before yeah. he ended up getting a Fusion trophy truck. So I needed a pre-rider to go down to Baja with Greg. So it was kind of an impulse buy. I knew it raced. I knew it had some big shocks on it. But these are 4.0 Kings. You know what I mean? It yeah. had, had the, these are what, two and a half, I believe? Yeah, that's a two and a half with a three inch spring and then a two and a half inch bump stop. But on that note of Bauer, so when I used to go to like MDR races before MDR closed down, and I think some of the more races, and I think it even raced yeah. trophy truck in like best in the desert or score, yeah. Yeah. it took the championship because it finished. 
that no, I don't know. <laughs> no, it that's, did, that's it did. I, know, yeah. I mean, drop facts, whoever knows that stuff, but I remember that they raced trophy truck in this thing and it might not have been the fastest thing, but it, what it did is it finished. Yeah. Like it consistently finished. So it used to and be. that's why I wanted it because I wanted something I could go down to Baja. Reliable. And beat up and yeah. it's reliable. Cause you're out in the middle of nowhere. For sure. Right? For and sure. it had the cage and the GPS and everything that I, that I pretty needed. Now we've upgraded a lot since then. Yep. But the core suspension and all that is still all h and Now, one thing that's interesting about this truck is it's obviously a Raptor's four-wheel drive. So he took the four-wheel drive out. So it has a swing set steering on it. Mm -hmm. And then they took the transmission, Walter's transmission in Temecula, took the band out. So it still has a six-speed transmission. Yeah. So one of the coolest things, and we've talked about this with the truck that you're building, yeah, I want more sure. than four gears. Yeah, split the Because power. I think, yeah, I want the splits to be closer so that way you can use the torque of the motor. Yeah and not have to rev it out like most LSs you have to. So it's got the stock 6.2 motor, yep. with a little bit done with it, a tune, and I don't know if everybody knows Big Dummy Frank with the monster truck, but but he's helped me with this thing a ton. So Frank's the guy that used to have the dirt bike controls in the monster truck where, yeah. you, where you stand up. Yes. That's how people know it. Monster Jerky has a stand-up driver's position, a first in the industry. The stand-up position allows Frank's legs to act as additional shock absorbers in hard landings. Yeah, yeah. The same thing with this, so you guys, this used to race, it used to say LA police gear on it for a long time. You would know, like, where'd this truck come from? So that's that. So you have the shocks valve on it? I had the shocks valve by... Keith Marigold, right? Keith Marigold. KDM. KDM, yes. Yep. So KDM did the shocks, he did the coatings and everything on it, did a great job with yep. that. There's a lot of parts in there that needed to be redone, and once he revalved, he has a valving for the H&M trucks. Yep. Back to the jumping off of those jumps at yeah. the LACR, the thing would fly straight, land, like Perfect. nobody's business. Yeah. You know? And the weird thing about that is the truck was in limp mode at that point. Yeah, I remember you having some oh, kind of an engine thing. I, I sheared a belt. So we put a new belt on it, but it took out some of the wiring. Can I just say how pre-runner guy that is? <laughs> By the way, he was like, you know what? It's not going to work with all the power. So now it works going downhill. I'm going to send it downhill. Yeah, perfect. That's just such a pre-runner guy. Getting into the dude. solution. That's awesome. No, that's awesome, dude. I love that. So I did, I did a brief stint over at uh, H&M. This is their Raptor their Raptor kit, right? Yes. So it's a, it's like a 19 inch travel kit, um, you know, fabricated upper, fabricated upright, uh, fabricated lower, and then I know it uses the four wheel drive hub still. This, I actually had a program do a Oh, you did? Me, yeah. Because I didn't want the dual drill wheels. Yeah, right. Roy yep. did it through with Frank. Oh, cool. So Frank took the hub over there and Roy adapted his trophy truck. Yeah, uh, six on six and a half. Six on six and a half uh -huh. hub to the upright that was on here. Sweet, so that's yeah. actually something really special. That's, that's a one-off thing, yeah. Yeah. Because it still uses the factory brakes. Yeah, yeah, I saw the caliper under there, it fooled me. Yeah, so he's got the, I got the factory brakes. Yeah, four inch bypass. The other thing I'm noticing that's very interesting is there's two bump stops. Well, the, I had Frank add this one. Yep. And I wanted to take that one off, mm -hmm. but Frank said, no, leave it on there. Mm -hmm. I was like, so this was just something because that's such a small ratio right yep. there in my mind. I just thought this would be better And you know the other thing and it, it's it's a weird thing to kind of grasp But I've thought about it before when you engage the bump stop so early in the travel because when it's so close to the pivot there right. Then it's you're, you're hitting it. So what that's almost doing is acting like a sway bar because they're you know If you maybe, had them pressure, yeah, maybe, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. you could you could valve them in a sense like that because they're almost well, engaged. What I did is I uh, the, this has not as much nitrogen in it. Yep. And this one, we kind of played with that as far as the bumps. And that's the right way to do it. You'd want to have your primary be that one up on the upper, just because it's at the end of the travel. Oh, I mean, this is a uh, you know your standard issue H and M stuff. Kevin owns the company over there, and yes. he's kind of been doing the same thing for a long time, and it works. And I think that he's really capitalized on building the most bulletproof F one fifty kit. Yes. You know you can have besides like and you can get this kid in four-wheel drive if you want I Yeah, mean, I think originally it was four-wheel drive. Yep. a lot of I think a lot of guys kind of transfer over just for all the moving parts and stuff Right, uh, kind of getting rid of I don't think you can do the four-wheel drive and the swing set Yeah, right. with the stock motor right. for sure. Yeah, this thing's got all skid and stuff on it But you can kind of see there's some portions of it there yeah. So it's got a whole subframe hanging out under there and then it's essentially going under the whole engine and everything. The center link, you can see this is the pivot there, and then the center link kind of goes out further than your lower pivot, which is right there. And that just makes things bulletproof. Then you get a, you know, a ported box, right? Ramp assist, yes. steering quickener, yes. all that stuff. What did you do to the inside when you got the thing? Not much, honestly. Yeah. I put new seats in the front. I wanted it to be four passenger. Yeah. Put a secondary GPS yep. in the top. It has, uh, you know, I have all the headsets and everything. Yep. You can actually play the radio. And yeah, it's kind of got all the amenities. 
And the one thing that, that all these things, why these pre-runners are so expensive is because air conditioning. <laughs> so, or air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, or air conditioning, you know, I mean, in some cases. But, yeah. But this one, uh, the AAC works like a champ. I mean, it's, it's pre-running in comfort, which if you're going to take your gal along with you. Sure. You know what yeah, I mean? Or kids your or whatever, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, the best way to pre-run is in a dirty UTV or something, but. We don't say those words. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But if you want to be clean and yeah, yeah. and uh, have a good time and, and uh, air condition and comfort, sure. this is the way to go for yeah. sure. And I've always kind of said it to you, like I've noticed, and I'm sure you've noticed before, is it seems like the factory air always blows like a little harder than when you put like a vintage in. Like even a Chevy box or a Ford box, it just seems like it puts out different than what this your vintage air. has one air conditioner, but it comes out the back sure. and out the front and it's been raced and everything else. Yeah. It still has the sunroof in it. Oh yeah. Yeah, and it's working, which is nice. But it's a true four seater. It's got a. We just moved storage. these together because mm -hmm. people were getting sick back here because of the front seat. Was oh yeah. Move these together and up about yeah. four inches mm -hmm. between these two tubes. Yeah. Your head a little head space in there, yeah. and then you're not as claustrophobic back here, yeah. kind of. Well, it's mainly just because so you can see a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Kind of get over and see. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and it's cool that you can take a truck that has been raced and then take it and put your spin on it to where you can enjoy it and it be Well, nice. I just always want things to look nice, you know yep. what I mean? And not afraid to work on things. So between, like I said, me and Frank, we've kind of gone over every single inch of this thing. Down in Mexico, the guy, the 905 guy, we were down there yep. and got stuck in the sand. You know, and it was buried. And we, the sun's going down and I was starting to panic, right? Because you're out in the middle of Mexico. So he told me, Aaron from the 905 team said, look, just let the air out of the tires. So I'm like, okay, I let the air out of the back tires. No, you gotta let them out of all four. Yeah. So we let down to five pounds and drove right out. So we put a big air compressor and a tank, and now I can fill up a 40 inch tire in about four minutes. Yeah, and see, what's nice about something like this is you learn that, and then you know what you want, yeah. you know, later, and that's like even stuff we've talked about, right? right. It's just having those essentials there and, to make your life easier. And I think that's a true statement because what I've learned from this truck and that truck and that truck, we're applying to the Morgan truck. Yep. So it's awesome. It's a kind of a full circle thing. The exotic pre-runner. Yep. As they call it. And you know what? That's why we got to do some like sand dune, like duning with the two wheel drive truck 101. I think that'd be awesome. Like take dudes out and, and teach them how to dune things. Take sure. Oh yeah, tires. yeah. A lot of that is just the seat time we talked about and experience. You know? I've never oh, yeah. been to the dunes. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, my see, next step. Go. Oh, let's go. I got paddles right over there for that thing. Yeah, I've let's go. Been, yeah, I've already that'll been. be rad. Oh no, that'd be great. Sorry, Thomas. We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> steal you, bro. You're gonna. You're gonna we're go gonna have to here. exploit it's all these vehicles. <laughs> So this thing's beautiful. I mean, obviously you've, you've put your own twist on it. I have a buddy's Pablo. Pablo calls it Seafoam. Yep, the Seafoam Raptor. And then the rear on here is just a 10 inch. Is it a Dirt Tech housing? That's usually- Dirt Tech housing, yep. four inch housing. It's got the 40 splined axles in it. Evan Weller, third member. And then the King Shocks revalve by KDM again. Yep. Got dual Odyssey batteries back here. What other spares have you put on here? Do you have other spares? Spare dry shaft. Yep. A spare link. Um, link there. With, I always carry a spare, obviously fluids, but I, I carry the power steering pump. Yep. Because those things can go out. I've had that happen once. A bag that goes in between there with all yeah. the tools, all the spares. Yep. So, yeah, yep. we have a pretty good amount of spares. Belts. Um, if someone wanted are, this, could they buy it? This thing is definitely for sale. I'd like to sell it just because it's like I need to move on to other things because if you take it out and use it, then it's just. You know, I mean, when I got other things to use. Yep. So it's been setting for a while. It's actually hadn't been anywhere since LACR. Copy that. We're almost going on a year where I hadn't done anything but worked on it, but it's ready to go and I would sell it, yes. I think that kind of segues us into like the next step for Thomas and where he is at. You know, this thing has proven itself with him and done what you needed to do, but he wanted something more capable, right? That was yeah. your, that was your end goal here. And that's why it's like, it's not, nothing wrong with it it's just you just you know you wanted something more capable i mean i'm sure there's somebody that would love that thing this thing's been for me it's bitching yeah i still like it that's yeah. why if i need to i'll hang on to it but i'd rather the only thing that don't go are these because those are the same wheels that we got on the other car the exotic yep. free runner and yep. i'm not letting those go unless somebody really has a <laughs> Love wants to them. pay for them yeah but honestly i really i'm trying to save those because you can't get them no more yeah they're super rare and they're beautiful but i have another set of wheels and tires i have six black wheels and tires that would go on it no yep. problem full h m truck it's beautiful seafoam raptor you can probably even search that thing on nothing, instagram it's got five thousand miles on the motor nothing hasn't been yeah. gone through it's it's ready to go 
Hey guys, hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Thomas's truck. We got a couple more to go. So stay tuned guys. Tell us what you guys like about this thing. If you guys know of someone that might want to pick this thing up, send it to them, share this episode. If you guys know somebody building a Raptor and want some inspiration, this is the one to go, man. It's Baja proven, hell track proven. Yep. It's pretty rad. Send them this thing, man. See what's going on on it. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Subscribe, like, and definitely support Morgan on his rad channel. And if you guys want to check out Thomas online, he has some cool stuff going on. Always cool little projects and trips. Follow him, check it out, and we'll go from there. Later, dudes. Take it easy. Yeah. <laughs>